Hi, and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week, we are focusing on how to talk to your inner child. Now, many of our clients struggle with speaking to the inner child. They either don't know how to begin the communication or they get stuck and frustrated because their inner child either blocks them, won't listen to them, and just simply closes off. So in this teaching, we're going to be giving you the essential basics of how to talk to your inner child and highlighting the traps that you need to avoid. Okay, David, so I know you work with a lot of your clients, teaching them how to do the inner child communication. What are the main things that your clients struggle with? The number one thing is they get tied up and get confused in their emotions. So they don't do the golden thread correctly right at the beginning. And so remember when you're doing the golden thread work, the first step is you have to separate your emotions from those thoughts that create them. Remember, you are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim of them. So that first step of separating the emotions from the thoughts and beliefs is the first step. I would always recommend, and you can look back on many videos, when you're doing the work, try and stop saying, I feel. Replace it with, I think, I believe, I choose. So instead of saying, I feel overwhelmed, I believe I'm overwhelmed. And that first step creates a separation where you can go down then and start asking the golden thread questions. So are you saying that, um, so the golden thread process technique for um, people who are watching or listening to this, that one of the first stages is to get clear on the language you're using when you're talking, uh, either your self-talk and or you having the conversation with the inner child. And rather than use the I feel word, we need to be saying, you know, what do you believe? What what do you think? What are you choosing? And 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 getting the inner child to start talking in the same language. Yes, it sounds very minor, but I I observe working with my clients. It's the most important thing. The part of your mind that we're calling the inner child. And if you're unsure what we mean in our model by the inner child, we've done literally hundreds of videos. So check it out and make sure you understand what we mean. That part of your mind loves talking about your feelings, your emotions, feeling scared, feeling frightened, feeling vulnerable, feeling overwhelmed, whatever word it does, because that takes you the farthest away from the inner child. I often think about it like a, like a triangle or a pyramid upside down, and at the top you have the widest part, which is the emotions, in the mid-range, you have the thoughts. At the bottom, you have the beliefs. And right at the point, you have the vow. And you have to navigate right down from the emotions and navigate down through by asking the golden thread, so why do you think that? So where did that come from? Until you get right to the bottom, to the point. Okay, so I want to try and give a, an example of what, we're, of what we're talking about here. So if I experience an uncomfortable red light emotional feelings, so mm -hmm. anger, upset, jealousy, anxiety, any of those kind of mm -hmm. type of red light mm -hmm. uncomfortable emotions. To begin the conversation with the inner child, we what you're saying is we wouldn't say, why, why am I, why are you feeling like this? Why yes. are you feeling like this, darling? Uh, you want to say, what's going on here? What are you thinking? What's... Yes. And then are you saying also that the inner, that when we talk back to ourselves as the inner child answering the question, that we shouldn't also answer saying, but I've, I, I feel anxious and because I feel this and I feel this exactly. is happening. It needs to be, I think, I believe, I choose. Exactly. So what the inner child would do if you go, oh, darling, so how do you, why do you feel about this? It will then start to run out with lots of other feelings. You have to do that separation at the beginning of the golden thread. And you have to, you called it anxiousness or jealousy or overwhelm. 
I would prefer to call it a red light feeling. So why are you creating the red light feeling? Now, the inner child will resist that because for the first time now, you're giving it accountability and self-responsibility. And so it will push back. And so here's where you, what I would call compassionate self-discipline or compassionate consistency. Some of my clients prefer you don't let them take you back to the feelings. I feel, I feel, because all the time that's taking you back to the top. But David, is it, some people might say, well, it's it's difficult enough doing this process because I've never done it before. And most of the time I, I'm, I'm trying to get a conversation, conversation started with my inner child. I'm not hear, hearing anything back. It's like talking to a blank wall. And the first time when my inner child does talk to me, it tends to be like a dump or an offload or like a venting for the first time of lots of emotions and feelings. Surely it's better to allow the inner child to talk than not talk at all. No, it's not. It's not if it's just kind of then talking about feelings, because what it's doing, it's keeping you trapped at the very top of that inverted okay. py pyramid. So you'll never go any deeper so you acknowledge what it's saying and you've got to get it off i feel yeah this is the number one thing i would do with my clients they go well i feel stop i think i choose i believe now it's very easy then well i believe but then when you do that even if you do that to yourself now you'll notice an energetic shift inside yeah. of you because you're having now to be accountable yeah. you're having <laughs> to take responsibility because when you talk about the feelings you can talk as a kind of a poor me, a victim mode that these feelings are happening to me. I'm being attacked from the outside. But when you change it to I believe, I think, I choose, I believe I'm, I, I, I choose to be jealous. I can't think of the things you said. I choose to be, anxious, to be anxious or angry. Now, right away, now you can see that that shifts the emotion. Yeah. And now, for the first time, you have to start to talk to the inner child. You've mentioned a couple of times there that the, the inner child goes blank or doesn't talk back to you. And I, I know a lot of people in our community say this, but I've got to be honest, I've never noticed that in all my career. When you can shift away from the feelings and get it to talk, the inner child really is always wanting to tell you what he thinks and what he believes. He always wants to point out the unfairness, the injustice, yeah. why things aren't the way it wants it to. It's normally the way that you said first, Alex. It normally dumps you go, blah, 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 mm. like an emotional kind of machine gun. Brrr, and you've got to try and make notes of all those things. And so you can go through each one of those in turn and address each of those points. Okay. I'd like to take a, a couple of steps back even before that. So if we are thinking, right, I believe this inner child work is going to be helpful for me. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly for for the work where you, you do with clients, virtually all your clients, the inner child work is an integral part yes. of the overall golden thread process yes. therapy consultancy that you, yeah. you're offering. Yeah. So, but this work can be done by yourself. Definitely. It can be done Definitely. as part of self-inquiry. So if I, for the very first time, thought, Right. All these years, I've been ignoring my inner child. Mm -hmm. I've just n not wanted to. I've been burying stuff. I've been avoiding. I've been manipulating. I can see all those patterns going on. Mm -hmm. I want to open the Pandora's box, as mm -hmm. some people kind of emotively mm -hmm. say. Is there a good or a best time and place to start this conversation? Well, the before I answer the question, there's one thing you said there which was very interesting. I want to open the Pandora's yeah. box, and it's normally the opposite. Mm -hmm. I don't want to open the Pandora's well, box. Well, the inner child doesn't... In a way, it's a paradox, because in, the inner child wants to be heard and listened to, and you haven't done that in the past. But equally, the inner child doesn't want to be exposed or have its ways of thinking... Uh, interrogated or examined. Exactly. So normally what happens is the Pandora's box stays closed okay. and the client is very reluctant to open the box. So once you open the box and your question was, what's the best time and the best way to do this? The best time and the best way is when you can have 
a quiet 15 or 30 minutes to yourself any time during the day. I would call this a meditation. I believe a meditation is the process of focusing your mind. So being able to sit quietly, you don't have to sit in any position, you don't have to be cross-legged, you don't have to sit in front of a candle or a flower. You can just sit quietly in your own thoughts, or some of my clients like to journal as they're doing the self-inquiry work, and you just give yourself time. And if the inner child part of your mind does the dump and gives you a lot of things, you try and slow them down, and you deal with one thing at a time. Normally, in my experience, the first thing they come with is the most important thing, and the rest are kind of tied onto it. So try and relate to the first thing that it says, that he or she says to you, and then work on that. And I would say, try and keep it so you're working between, I don't know what your lifestyle is, but if you can dedicate 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, that's all. So just try and do that every day and sit with it. And the end of 30 minutes, perhaps even doing a clock and say, that's it, we've stopped now for the day, we'll continue tomorrow. That's a good way of, do, of doing it. And so the opening question to begin the conversation, would, would it be typically something like, what would you like to talk about today? No. Or, what, or would it be something like, you know, what what's, what's the matter? You know, do you have something specific in mind? Say you've experienced a red light emotion earlier in the day. Or That's right. So, so I would always go off the emotion. Okay. So I would always say, you created an emotion that you want to call fear, mm -hmm. scared, frightened. I want to call that the red light. But could you tell me why you created that emotion? What is it you're scared about? What is it you're frightened about? What is it you're jealous about? What is it you're overwhelmed with? What is it you're scared of? Whatever it is. And don't let them go back onto I feel. Mm -hmm. I think, I choose, I believe. And then that begins the golden thread. And you said once in the video, I love what you said. It's like following a trail, like following the the what the, yeah, yeah. the, the trail bread, of breadcrumbs, the breadcrumb the trail. Exactly, it's the same <laughs> yeah. type type of thing. And then you'll notice very quickly, and especially if you're new of doing this, the inner child will want to keep on saying, "I feel, I feel, I feel." And what they're trying to do there is to take you back to the top. Yeah. So just pause and I say, I believe, is, do you believe this? Do you think this? And then you'll notice that internal kind of pulling. So just stay calm, drop shoulders, take a breath and just say, is that what you think? Is that what you believe? Is that what you choose? And all of the time you're trying to put the accountability and the responsibility onto that part of the mind for the first time. This can be so powerful, so life-changing, I would put it that much, that for the first time now that you're building up a really meaningful relationship with that part of your mind, perhaps for the first time, perhaps for the first time, as Alex says, you've never sat down quietly, given yourself time, and listened to what that part of the mind is saying. As Alex quite rightly said, most of my clients kind of lock it away, push it down, put mm -hmm. a cover over it, block it over, as Alex called the Pandora's box. But that Pandora's box never goes away. And so when you're opening the box, you give yourself time, you keep calm, but you don't go into the emotions. You keep asking why, why, why do you believe this? Why do you choose that? Why do you think that? And that always puts the emphasis onto them. And I think some people might think, oh, David, this sounds like I'm trying to call the inner child out. I'm trying to, I'm almost like a little bit hostile against mm -hmm. my inner child. But it's not, it's, it's done in a very gentle, uh, relaxed, compassionate way. But there is a level of trying to steer or guide the child to answer the questions, you know, why do you, why do you, why are you creating these emotions or why are you experiencing this or why do you believe this or wh where's where's the evidence? Let's have a look at it. I think, would you say that we have to, it's almost like we have to convey to the child that we're doing this as a collaboration. It's not, we're not doing this to kind of put our, that part of our mind on the spot and ho hold it accountable and point the finger at it. It's almost like for the first time, we're trying to do this work together now. Exactly. You're absolutely not trying to criticize, compare, or be judgmental. We call it CCJ. That's the last thing you're trying to do. 
You are trying to be like a parent. I would call it like a spiritual parent to your spiritual inner child. And so you're working together as a team. That's how I think about it. When I'm working with my clients, we often get to a situation, and some clients can do this quite easily, and some clients have difficulty. I almost think it's like, like channeling or something like that, where I ask the client to relax, drop the shoulders, breathe deep, try and be calm. And then I say, would you allow me to try and speak to your inner child? And I would always call the inner child a little pet name, like sweetheart, little one, son, whatever, just so the client knows I'm trying to contact that part of the mind. And once I start asking the child questions, you'll be amazed, as normally we can't shut the child up. It's just at last somebody wants to listen to me. At last someone's going to answer my questions. So this is definitely not, as Alex says, you're not chastising, you're not fighting, you're not trying to make them look small, you're not belittling them, you're not trying to make them look stupid. The opposite, really. You're trying to listen to them, you're trying to address their, uh, their problems, their issues, their life lessons that they haven't learned. And I think one of the most common traps that uh, people can fall into with this inner child communication is they begin with some success. They, they start to get responses. They start to get the inner child opening up, giving them the kind of dump of all the things the inner child has wanted to say for so long that you've been ignoring. And then, But then they get to the point when you're drilling down on the why do you believe this, really trying to guide the conversation in a, in a productive way that the inner child starts blocking them, starts giving them the cold treatment, won't listen to them. And it's like they reach a kind of a, a roadblock in the communication and as a result of that they become very frustrated uh, with themselves and with the inner child. Yeah and this is the life lesson Alex because this is what you find because the inner child has normally been developed because you encountered very poor parenting techniques and so when you were a child for whatever reason the adults in your life didn't have the skill or the knowledge to parent you and to answer your questions and to be involved with you. And so therefore, a lot of my clients also haven't got that skill. And I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of my clients will treat themselves worse than they've ever been treated as mm -hmm. a child. They will ignore them, as you said, they will lock things away, they will avoid, they will skip over things, they will go around. And so you have to build that integrity and that trust and that honesty. And that's why I said earlier, if you're going to do this, I would be doing it 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, no more. Just keep it regular. But a lot of people will start off with what they call good intentions and they'll do this for three or four days and then they stop. And then what they're doing, they're letting themselves down. And they normally stop for the reasons that you said, Alex. It's because they've got to a difficult point like the three li lies is a really important point. I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable. So the inner child, when you get down the golden thread, will normally give you one of those three lies, or maybe all three of the lies in some form. And then the adult part of you doesn't know how to answer this. Although we've done many videos on how to answer this, and we have a Facebook community where we're talking about this type of thing as all the time but you have to continue with a golden thread. Many of the questions I get is, right, David, I've done the work, I've got down to the three lies, what do I do now? And what you do now is to continue the golden thread. So if the inner child says, I'll just choose one, I'm not good enough, then it's the same question. Okay, sweetheart, why do you believe you're not good enough? Now you'll get a resistance. Mm -hmm. Now you'll feel the inner child pushing back. Now for the first time that they have to start to be accountable of why they believe they're not good enough. So many, many of the, the inner children will go to the results of thinking you're not good enough. Oh, it's because I didn't pass my 11 plus or it's because someone, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. And you say, no. Those are the results of thinking you're not good enough. We want to know, where did that come from? Were you born not good enough? 
When did you inherit this not good enoughness? Where did it come from? Who gave it to you? How did you get it? This is a very important area. This is where the inner child now will really start to be a little bit kind of resistant yeah. is the only word. I sometimes, when I'm working with a client, you almost get the idea that the inner child, you know, you've got back. to push him back. And, and that's the time when, um, you know, the kind of yin and yang, You, the worst thing you can do is push back against mm -hmm. the pushback, mm -hmm. give more yang against the yang. You need to soften, but still be kind of firm in your position. And I suppose that may mean, Say okay, well, we've we've made some progress today. We'll revisit this tomorrow. As long as you revisit but the following keep day. Keep the accountability. That's, That's right. the key. Yeah. That's right. And also, as you know, you're absolutely right. So a good way would be, well, we've done 15 minutes a day. You've done really well, sweetheart. So we'll pause today, have a think about it, and we'll carry on tomorrow, as long as you carry on the following day. Another way to do it is what you call the flip. Well, what I call the flip. Instead of saying, oh, stop it now, pull yourself together, you're not good enough, you say, why do you think that? Where's the evidence for that? How did that come from? Who told you that, for instance, is a great question. I'm not good enough. Who told you that? Well, my mommy, my daddy. Now you can say, oh, right, okay, well, that's important if your mommy and daddy told you that. Do you believe everything your mommy and daddy tells you? Do you believe everything that they, do you do every, everything that they say? So what you're trying to do is to move, the, flip it over so you have this genuinely interested approach. And this is what I love so much about the inner child work. When you get the techniques right, you can move very quickly and speak to this gorgeous little child. You know, I've said to you in many videos, Many people come to me and they tell me that they're in a child, some kind of a demon, the devil, an evil, like the devil sitting on their shoulders, nasty, critical. And I've never once found that. Every piece of work I've done on the inner child, I always found a beautiful, sensitive child, locked and stuck, and just needs someone to go and sit with them. I always imagine that what we're doing, we're finding them in a little dark room, huddled in a corner, and I try and teach my client, well, let's go and sit with the child now. We're not going to drag him out of the dark room. We're not going to shout at him. We're not going to say, pull yourself together. Stop it. Stop doing this. We're going to say, why are you doing it? What is the thought behind this? What's the reasons you're doing this? Because although the inner child can be very resilient and very willful, the inner child's are not stupid. And so once you can start building up that relationship, that, that communication between your inner child, this work becomes so much easier. The difficulty for a lot of my clients is they've never experienced this themselves. They've never experienced a parent being able to sit with them and talk them through difficult situations particularly if they're being a bit childlike and a bit childish and a bit stubborn and a bit, you know, all children are a bit like that. And so if they've never had an experience on how to deal with a child like that, they find it very difficult to deal with their own inner child. Yeah. And so, I mean, we've done so many teachings, David, on this inner child reparenting and various techniques and skills and how, how you work it through. And I can put links to those teachings in our show notes to give you more information and more help. But the ultimate aim of these inner child conversations, the inner child work, is what, what are we, we've talked about the beginning, we've talked about the middle and what happens, and where are we aiming to get to? We're aiming to educate that part of your mind what we call life lessons, into the spiritual perspective is not believing what the child says, not repeating what the child says. So if the child's saying to you in your mind, I'm not good enough, you don't take that as gospel and go around believing and living your life like you're not good enough, acting like you can't cope, behaving like you're unlovable, 
because then you are not in control of your life. The inner child is. And that's when I say stop it. I'm talking to the adult. When I say stop it, I'm now talking to the adult. I'm not talking to the inner child. Don't follow what the inner child says because when you do, you put the inner child in the driving seat of your life and you are following behind this childlike logic and perception. So the idea is, as you go down, you learn the techniques, you answer the questions, you learn the valuable life lessons. What you're doing is you're creating a oneness. The inner child and the adult are coming together as one. There's no separation. And this is why the idea of the inner child work is so important because at the beginning at the top of the golden thread when you're talking about the uh, emotions there is a separation in your head between the inner child and your adult mature mind and what we're trying to do is to resolve the issue so these slowly merge together and become one in a in a oneness and a spiritual truthfulness and that and that separation is most commonly experienced when we say something like I know uh, this logically makes sense, what you're saying, but there's part of me that still won't let it go. And can I tell you the first... And the, it's that the, separation, that conflict. That, the, i just stop you there, because the most important thing, and because you can test whether this is happening to you, is my clients will say, I've listened to your videos, I agree with you that I create my emotions, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. There's a separation because adult, their adult mature mind agrees that, of course, we create our emotions. But there's another part of the mind that we're calling the inner child that doesn't agree. Yeah. And there's the separation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, David. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, I hope, hope this teaching has given you some useful, essential, basic tips on how to talk to your inner child. As I say, we've done so many more teachings on inner child work and inner child reparenting to help you with this. But we wanted to go back to basics and re-highlight this really important point about opening the conversation. How do we deal with the roadblocks and a reminder of where we're actually headed to with this work. If you have enjoyed this teaching, please do let us know. Do share it with someone else who you think would also benefit. David works one-to-one -one with clients all over the world every week on exactly the sort of issues we've talked about today. If you're interested in learning more about David's sessions, I will put a link to learn more in the show notes below. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.